Uh, hi guys, today I have a very special tutorial. Uh, it's all about how to turn those dull and sort of boring looking images or video clips into something very cinematic looking. Uh, now for this tutorial I'm going to invite a, a very talented uh, photographer for all the way from Paris, France. His name is Serge Ramelli. Uh, he's got a really cool YouTube channel where he also shows you guys you know, all kinds of sort of neat you know, post-processing uh, tips and tricks. Uh, now a lot of his tutorials are, are meant for photographers but the exact same techniques can be applied uh, to filmmaking. Well without uh, you know, any further ado I'm uh, just going to let him uh, take over. So first I want to thank Tom Antos for having me on his channel. I've been watching his channel for quite some time and I love his videos. I think a lot of photographers today are getting into videos and I find that some of his tutorials were very useful. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. But I do English tutorials on Lightroom and post-processing. Uh, if you are into a dramatic landscape or you know, very uh, contrasty black and white or digital blending or you want to learn how to make time-lapse, well, I have a channel with over 90 videos that talks about that. They are about 10 minutes long and I give you little tips and tricks. All you have to do to get these free weekly tutorials is click here to subscribe to my channel. Now, to give you an idea of what I do, I'm going to show you a full retouching of a horse that I shot right into the sun. This is the final photo. It's a very challenging to do photos right into the sun and to get a good retouching out of it. So here it is, my horse into the sun, one of my most famous photo. And you can get, if you go on my website, photosearch.com, you can get the raw files for free so you can try it at home. So here it is. All right, mesdames et messieurs. So let's do this retouching. And let me just give you a few informations about how this photo was taken. Uh, to start with, this um, I took this bracketing. Why did I do that? Because when you shoot straight into the sun, the camera has a hard time figuring out what's the right exposure. So what I usually do is I do some bracketing, not to the idea that I will do HDR, but to the idea that I will get uh, the right exposure for that photo. You see, so uh, this was shot at 1 25th of a second at 7.1. That's the normal exposure and that's what I end up using. But then I also took, I was bracketing, I also took this underexposed photo at 1 500th of a second, so much faster, much faster. So, you know, as the shutter speed is faster, there's less light coming in, so there is, the photo is darker. And then automatically, uh, it took another photo at 1 30th of a second, so much slower. And it was so slow that you can see that the horse is totally, um, is completely blur. So the only one that was usable was this one. So what I, I suggest that you do is uh, either you go manual and you try to get a, the idea is that when you look at the photo on the back of your camera, uh, the, you should still be able to see some details in the sun. Like it should not just be like a white circle like it is here, you know? And of course your foreground is gonna be very dark, but you can still see a bit of details and you know that if you shoot raw, that's important, you must shoot raw for this, you will be able to get some details. So basically you shoot underexposed. And a, a little advice I can give you, if you're not sure, you just go AV or manual mode and then you do some bracketing. But you, you do uh, normal shoot uh, minus one plus one, not minus two plus two, so that you have you know uh, uh, exposures which are just very close to each other. And one of the three photos will be perfect to retouch. For me, this is the perfect one. Why? As I said, you know, it's not totally burned with the sun and uh, the horse still has some details. Okay, so uh, yeah, once we've done that, let's retouch the photo. So look at the magic of raw file. If I open up the shadows, check this out. I can see details in the horse that I couldn't see before. And if I bring down the highlights, now I can see a lot of details in the sky. Then let's do the usual stuff. Let's press the option key, my usual formula, if you know this. Uh, let's click on the white and look at this. It's not burned out. You see, it's all black, meaning that the raw file has got hidden information. If I go to the right, I'm starting to see the sun. Okay, when I'm starting to see the sun, I drop it. Okay, then I do the blacks and I do the same thing. And now I've got a contrast, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a lot better, but it's not the right color because I was riding to the sun and I was on automatic white balance. And when you're on automatic white balance into the sun, 
usually it's too green, it's too blue, which is the case here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cloudy, to shade, I'm sorry. Shade is already much better because shade, uh, when you do, when you have photos where the sun is in the photo, try to go with shade. It's a good starting point. But for this, I want to make like a gone with the wind type of photo, you know, very like Steven Spielberg, um, uh, war horse type of photo, you know, with this really dramatic sky. So for this, I'm just going to go right uh, on the temperature uh, with the, you know, with the yellow and add a bit of, of magenta, something like that. I'm going to go really yellow. I think it's the proper color. It's the good look for that photo. Okay, and next what I'm going to do is add, uh, I'm not going to add clarity because it doesn't work on that photo. So I'm just going to leave clarity alone. I'm going to add maybe a bit of contrast and a bit of vibrance. Okay, not much. And um, voila, then I'm going to go into uh, the lens correction. I'm going to unabal profile correction as I usually do. Doesn't do much on this one. Then I'm going to go to, go to colors and remove chromatic aberration. We can see if there is any chromatic aberration no not that much it's good for a photo that was taken into the sun but i still you know make sure that's on and um and then one thing which is important if you go on to the horse because it's an over underexposed photo you can see it's got some noise so let's go into noise reduction and uh let's go to um yeah around i'm gonna go big on this one i'm gonna go on like 40. i want to make sure there is like hard in you see no more noise Ooh. I love the noise reduction. And on colors, I'm gonna go like 79. That's very important. Okay, now I don't have any noise in that photo and uh, and I like the way it looks. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it even more warmer. So I'm gonna go into the U saturation and luminance. And I'm just gonna, you see the first three colors, red, orange, and yellow as the warm colors. I'm gonna put a bit more red, a bit more orange, and a bit more yellow. In this uh, on the saturation and i'm going to go on the u and on the u i'm going to take anything which is a bit green and go towards the yellow and anything which is orange go a bit towards the no not the red and this one i'm not going to touch and maybe a bit this one yeah it's mainly the third line the yellows you see anything which is like yellow greenish more towards the yellow okay i like that um Maybe add a bit more contrast. I really want the photo to be dramatic. I love this dramatic effect. Okay, and um, now that we've taken care of the noise, let's take care of the sharpening. And as usual, press the Option key when you do the sharpening because you want to make sure... Uh, oops, sorry. It's not... Press the Option key when you use the masking. On the sharpening, let's go the whole way to 77. Now, usually when you follow my tutorials, I go to about 90 on the sharpening. And this time I'm going to go to 77 because it's a pretty noisy photo. Okay, but I'm still going to do the masking. So press the Option key and go on the right. As usual, it creates a mask. More I go on the right, which I'm going to do a lot on this one. Uh, anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. So I don't want the sky to be sharpened. So that's pretty cool. Okay, and one thing that's very important on this photo is to um, is to crop it, uh, to make it more panorama, more cinema looking. So I'm going to take the crop tool. I'm going to take the the angle tool to get, make sure the horizontal line is cool. So I'm just going to follow the horizontal line. It's going to make the photo straight. And then before I eat Hunter, I want to take out some of the bottom and some of the top. Just make make it more panoramic. I think it works better. It's more like movie style, you know, because we want to go like Gone with the Wind. Okay, and uh, so that's pretty cool. And then I'm going to do some heavy post crop vignetting. Okay, yeah, I want this the photo to be like a bit dark. All right. Next, but least, uh, last but not least, actually no, I'm going to go a bit less on on the on the high on the post crop vignetting. But I, I think that the, the grass in front is not so nice. So I'm going to take a brush here. Uh, when you open the brush tool, you got all the settings of the brush tool. Make sure everything is at zero. For this, you press the Option key. The Reset button happens, uh, appears. You click on it. Everything goes down to zero. And then you go Minus Exposure. And I'm just going to, just to get some attention out of the grass, I'm going to darken the front here. I want the attention to be on, on, the, on the horse. 
on this beautiful horse. Now, it's not going very fast because my flow is at 64 and my density is at 68. I should have checked that. So I'm going to put this back to 100 and try again. And now it's going to get darker, which is cool. And I'm also going to create a new brush. And this time I'm going to darken the top of the sky. Yeah, just a little top of the sky. I want to make this even more dramatic sky. Okay, I kind of like that. Uh, now we've got some here. If, if we zoom here at 100%, we can see there's some flare here. And these ones are very distracting. So I'm going to use this tool. Uh, and you know, no, you know what? I'm going to go. Well, I'll show you two things. Let's say you don't have Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you can just use the spot healing tool here and just click on this. Make sure it's sampled something clean. Okay, that's perfect. And click on that. Make sure it takes something clean. And voila, we have almost nothing. But you see here, this I have a bit of a, of a lens flare here. It's a bit too bright here. So let's create a new brush. Let's see if we can do it in Lightroom. A new brush. Okay, and this time I'm going to darken here. Yes, but it's too strong and it's too big. So I'm going to, you see, I can darken more or darken less. So I'm going to dark, darken less and less. And I just want to darken the center. So I'm going to make my brush smaller with, the, with my wheel. And I want to brush inside here. And I want to make this a bit darker. Not too much. I just want to take out the lens flare. Okay, and this is too strong now. So if it's too strong outside, you can press minus and just erase anything on the brush you don't want. I didn't do such a good job. I didn't do such a good job. Okay, it's hard to do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this in Photoshop because it's it's kind of hard to do in, in Lightroom. But anyway, it's already a, a pretty nice photo in Lightroom. So I'll show you the before and after. That's the before, that's the after. Pretty amazing, huh? quite a difference. And if you want to take out the lens flare, well, then just right click. Right click and go into edit into Photoshop CS6. Okay, Photoshop CS6 opens up. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to duplicate the layer. Then I'm going to detect the stem tool, which is here. And I'm going to put, let's go normal mode, but let's lower the opacity to 50%. That's important. Okay, let's try that. And I'm just going to sample from here. And just, you know, with a clone stem tool, the idea is to take out, I don't like this lens flare. It looks kind of weird, you know. So I just want to make it a bit, a bit less visible. So I'm going to, here I'm going to take some sample here and go here. And as I have a 50% stem tool, it doesn't exactly do it 100%. I'm going to sample from here, for example, and go here just to take out some of the lens flare here, here also. Maybe make, sm make this a bit smaller. You know, the idea is that we take this flare a bit off, you know, it's just a bit too strong before, after, you know, it makes, it's a bit more complex. It's very subtle. I can even lower the opacity if you think it's a bit too strong, but I, yeah, I kind of like it. You know, it just took out a bit the, the attention of the lens flare and, you know, and you can do some other technique like dodge and burning and things like this. But the whole idea is that I want to encourage you to take photos into the sun, you know, I think it works very well. So that's the photo backs from Photoshop. And I think, you know what, I think I'm going to, I'm going to add even so you can continue to retouch it. Even it comes back from Photoshop and just go even more crazy uh, on the white balance, even more yellow and add even more vibrance to it, uh, you know, to make it really crazy. I really love very saturated photo and it doesn't work on all photos, but on this one, I think it works. So there's to show you where we started from. Uh, this is the before and after. Let me show you the before and after. That's the before, that's the after, quite a change. And that's the final result that we got here uh, with this photo. That's the before Lightroom, that's the after in Photoshop. So that's the final result. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I thank again Tom Antos to invite me on his channel. And I hope to see you soon in one of my episodes. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you, Serge. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did. Uh, now, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I do a lot of behind the scenes kind of things with the camera. 
how to design your shot, how to set up the lights, all that stuff. Uh, but of course, a big part of getting that cinematic look is you know all the post processing you do afterwards with that raw image uh, that comes straight from your camera. So you know things like color grading, uh, any kind of sort of post processing, and uh, and that's what Serge is really good at. So uh, if you guys are you know want to see more uh, cool tutorials like that, check out his YouTube channel. Now, if you're uh, checking out my channel for the first time, uh, and then uh, I just wanted to let you know that I also have uh, over seven hours of uh, free filmmaking tutorials you can find here. And as always, if you want to find more information or get in contact with me, then uh, check out my website at TomAntosFilms.com. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next week.